begin our uh, message uh, here this morning. I'd just like to ask if anybody would uh, join me in uh, just congratulating all the mothers. I know all you fathers uh, probably would, and I think that uh, as we've come here to gather and honor the Lord, I think he also honors uh, mothers. So uh, just uh, as for all you mothers. I sure do uh, appreciate uh, each and every one that's uh, here this morning. If you looked at your uh, bulletin uh, cover here this morning, it's, be- it's called Beatitudes uh, for the Mother. I'd just like to read that. So blessed is he who, whose daily tasks are labor of love, for her willing hands and happy heart translate duty into privilege, and her labor becomes a service to God. Blessed is she who opens the door to welcome both stranger and friends, for gracious hospitality is a test of brotherly love. Blessed is she who mends stockings and toys and broken hearts, for her understanding is a balm to humanity. Blessed is she who scours and scrubs, for well she knows that cleanliness is one expression of godliness. Blessed is she whom children love, for the love of a child is more to be valued than uh, fortune or fame. Blessed is she who sings while she works, for music lightens the heaviest loads and brightens the dullest chore. Blessed is she who dusts away doubt and fear and sweeps out the cobwebs of confusion, for her faith will triumph over adversity. Blessed is she who serves laughter and smiles with every meal, for her buoyancy of spirit is an aid to mental and physical digestion. Blessed is she who preserves the sanctity of the Christian home, for hers is a sacred trust that crowns her with dignity. All these things that mothers uh, do for us, many times uh, we overlook them and just count them uh, as something that mom does. But looking back 37 years of of my life and seeing what my mother's done for me, what my wife does uh, for my children, it's an awesome job and a big responsibility. In 1963, a woman by the name of uh, Betty Friedman, she wrote a book called uh, The Feminine Mystique. She was one of uh, a sequence of women who came to the forefront to uh, to push uh, women's uh, uh, rights. Now, before I put my uh, foot in it, in my uh, big mouth, I'm going to say that I also am an advocate uh, for women to uh, enjoy all the pleasures and uh, the rights that uh, she is entitled to. I believe in a lot of things that uh, women are fighting for, but I believe only in those things that women are fighting for that uh, reflect the Christian uh, reflect Christian principles. And uh, that's where I'll, uh, I'll make my stand. And Amen. A smart man wouldn't say any more about it, then I'm not, I'm not going to uh, say any more. But uh, more and more, we see uh, women's groups becoming more vocal and uh, more militant, uh, even in uh, the things that uh, they're, they're fighting for. Um, they demand uh, lots of things, pay equity, and I'm all for that. A woman doing the, the, what a man does should be paid uh, the same. Uh, they also want uh, equal opportunities, which is okay. Uh, equity of sex, women's uh, liberation, uh, women, women want uh, freedoms, and uh, all these uh, other things that go also with career and that. And uh, so we find a lot of uh, groups uh, uh, surging ahead and trying to, uh, uh, to uh, gain strength and, uh, and power to, to motivate their own ideas. Everything that uh, we see in the world is being uh, challenged today and I think that the sanctity of uh, motherhood is also uh, being challenged and I'm just afraid that uh, that the honor that is attached to uh, to motherhood will be lost in this in the struggle that women have as they uh, try to uh, rise up to uh, the forefront in that society and become uh, a group to be uh, to rival uh, men and uh, I just hope that it never comes to that, but I see more and more that that uh, that motherhood is is being lost, that that sanctity and that that wonderful privilege of being a mother is uh, is maybe not looked on the, the same way that it was uh, so many years ago. 
everything is being challenged. Everything that we hold dear uh, in, in our lives is being challenged. We see it on the news uh, every day where one uh, group of people uh, have to uh, give up uh, their rights. It's happening to Christians all over the place. Christian rights are being challenged. We have to uh, give up the, the rights and the privileges that we've had uh, for because somebody else uh, has challenged them and, and won in the courts. Every group is uh, fighting for a better position in society. All the small minority groups are, are battling it out to, to get to the top so that their voices might be heard in uh, government and, and in society. We see it uh, happening in Europe All when uh, <laughs> communism... Uh, uh, was destroyed, all these uh, countries being raised up, all screaming with their own uh, voices to be heard, all trying to raise uh, themselves to the top uh, of the power struggle. And in our society, we're seeing different groups uh, trying to to raise up to the top of uh, the social ladder, that they they would be the voice of of strength and that their, uh, their voices would uh, be heard above all else's. Some uh, women's groups would be offended if I if I read that uh, to them, what, because they don't see that uh, motherhood and all that's associated uh, with motherhood is a position of uh, strength. It's a lot of groups uh, see it as a as a place of uh, weakness and uh, dishonor, a place of uh, of servitude, and I don't see it that way. A lot of women's groups see uh, and view motherhood as an inconvenience and a hindrance to achieving their goals. And so a lot of women uh, opt out of, uh, of motherhood and, and uh, pursue a career and pursue all the things that uh, they want uh, being a woman, but not with the hindrances of a, of a child. Some women only see motherhood as a mountain of diapers, lost sleep, three o'clock feedings, uh, endless cycle of of uh, breakfast, lunches, and and uh, suppers, of lunch bags uh, to be packed, and uh, scrubbing, and and scouring, and 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 cleaning, and uh, that's pretty negative. I just like to say here this morning that no woman who chooses motherhood over a career ever needs to feel that she has missed life's best, because life's best, I think, for a woman is motherhood. A woman that will find her greatest satisfaction and, and meaning in life, not in trying to uh, challenge a man in, in uh, his uh, roles, not in, in pursuing a career, not in rising to the top of the social ladder, but I think a woman will find her greatest uh, satisfaction and meaning to life in being a wife and a mother. And the reason I say that is because motherhood is a partnership with God and to be viewed as such. And uh, there is no other career that a woman can take that would put her in the position of being a partner with God, uh, used by God, uh, greatly used by God to accomplish His will. What I'd like to do this morning then is just to look at one mother uh, from the Bible, uh, Hannah name. She saw that uh, being a mother was a partnership with God. I'd like us also to see that uh, a mother uh, has responsibilities within that partnership and that also a mother has rewards also within that partnership too. Let's just read then the uh, first 11 verses of, uh, of 1 Samuel. It said that there was a certain man of, uh, of Ramah of uh, Mount Ephraim and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jer Jeroham the son of Elihu, the son of Tahu, the son of uh, Zuf, an Ephraimite. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hanan, the name of the other was Penina. And uh, Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. And her adversary also provoked her relentlessly to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, 
went she uh, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Then said Elkanah to her husband to Hannah, Why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitter, bitterness of soul, and she prayed unto the Lord and wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt, wilt in, indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but wilt give unto thine handmaid a male child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. Hannah had a major problem. You might say that uh, your problem uh, is that you have kids, and I know that they can be a headache sometimes, but, but for Hannah, her big problem was that uh, she didn't have any. Uh, she was barren, and uh, she felt disgraced because in her culture, for a woman to uh, be barren and not have children was a sign of disgrace, that God wasn't blessing her, that, that God uh, looked unfavorably on them. And, uh, and so her heart was, uh, was for a child. This was uh, the strongest desire in, in her, that she uh, should have a child. And it didn't help the mat uh, matter that her husband's other wife, uh, Panina, constantly taunted her, saying, oh, look at all the children uh, I have, and, and, and you haven't uh, got any. And uh, I don't know why a woman would do that to another one, but, but so she did to maybe raise in her status above, uh, above Hannah. But I asked myself why, why she was barren, and it doesn't tell us uh, here why the Lord had uh, shut up her womb. But uh, she was barren. She seems like a godly uh, sort of uh, woman. And I don't see that there's any sin in her life that uh, would cause her to be barren, that the Lord would uh, cause this. I come to the conclusion that God wanted her to realize uh, her helplessness and her dependence on, on him. So Hannah, with this uh, insurmountable problem that she couldn't do anything about, uh, she turns it over to the Lord and she makes a vow. She makes a, a promise to the Lord here. And uh, she enters into a partnership with him. And the vow was that if the Lord would give her a, a male son, that she would turn him over to the Lord to be used of the Lord all the days of his life. And uh, these were the terms of the agreement. And so Samuel was uh, committed when he was uh, born to uh, serve the Lord as a, as a Nazarite. We haven't got the time to look at it, but uh, it was a, a position as, a, as Nazarite totally committed unto the Lord that uh, he would uh, abstain from a lot of uh, things that uh, most people were doing, but holy and separated unto the Lord would be uh, the, the lot for Samuel in, in his whole life. How do you uh, see motherhood? Do you see it as a, as a partnership with God? Think about it. Now, there are uh, good partners and there are bad partners. Anybody that's ever been in business and had a business partner knows that it's very important uh, whom you choose to, to have a partner because it could mean the success or failure of your business. Motherhood is a partnership with God, but the sad thing is that so many women don't see it as a partnership with God. The reason I say that is I look around and I see that the things that women are doing with their uh, babies. I see abortion, millions and millions of babies uh, being destroyed. And I think that uh, abortion is really just a woman shaking her fist at, at God and, and saying, uh, I'll do it my way, that I'll make the decisions uh, over my own body, that I'll make the choice with what uh, I want to do with it. That's not a way that a partner uh, operates. Selective infanticide, it's where a woman aborts the, the baby or, or kills the baby on birth because they're not happy with the, the way that it turned out. How about child abuse? I see uh, child abu abuse as, as a woman really leaving God out of the picture and saying, I'll do with that child as I see fit to do. And not taking God into consideration, not taking her partner into uh, consideration. 
her partner being God, whom because God has, has given her uh, uh, children. Also, I see uh, sometimes women as partners of God, seeing and viewing their children as inconveniences and uh, nuisances. And I'm not sure what it was like uh, 50 years ago, but I, I look around now and I see more and more uh, women who are giving up motherhood for uh, the sake of a career, that they might have all the other things in life and uh, enjoy all the other pleasures of life rather than, uh, than motherhood. God needs women as, as partners. He really does. Adam and Eve are the only ones uh, whom God supernaturally uh, created. Everybody that came into the world after them came in the hard way. He needs uh, mothers to propagate the, the race. But he wants more than just uh, partners. He wants good partners. There was a little... Uh, poem that I came across. Let me just read a, a few lines of it. It says, I'll lend you for a little time a child of mine, he said, for you to love the while uh, he lives and mourn for when he is dead. It may be six or seven years or twenty-two or three, but will you, till I call him back, take care of him for me? He'll bring his charms to gladden you and should his stay be brief. You'll have his loving memories as solace for your grief. I cannot promise you he will stay since all from earth return, but there are lessons taught down there I want this child to learn. I've looked the whole wide world over in my search for teachers true, and from the throngs that crowd life's lanes, I've selected you. Now you, will you give him all your love, not think the labor vain, nor hate me when I come to call or take him back again? God needs uh, good partners. He needs uh, women who will see motherhood as such. He wants uh, women who see motherhood as more as a more of than a, a, the result of a night's uh, passion. He wants uh, women who see motherhood as more than an inconvenience or a way of uh, getting out from uh, the home. He wants women who who see motherhood and children as precious in God's sight as a privilege, as a, an awesome uh, responsibility, as loan from the Lord, and as children who should be uh, taught and trained up for the Lord to be raised for His glory, uh, a blessing. He wants women to see children as a blessing and as a tremendous obligation. And Psalm 127 says that children are a heritage from the Lord and that the fruit of the womb is, is His reward. Children are, are passed down from the Lord. They're given to us uh, from the Lord, not to be used and abused and, and done with whatever uh, we uh, think that we should do, but rather to be used for the Lord's glory. And Hannah was a good partner. She saw the preciousness of Samuel, and she realized that uh, he was passed down to her uh, from the Lord, and that Samuel's life would only find uh, reward and satisfaction in serving the Lord. And so she commits him to the Lord. Hannah prayed and said uh, this uh, wonderful prayer. She says that my heart rejoices in the Lord. My uh, horn is exalted in, in chapter 2, verse 1. In the Lord, my mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy like the Lord, for there is none besides uh, thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bowels of the mighty man are broken, and they that stumble are uh, girded with strength. They who were full have hired out themselves for bread, and they who were hungry cease to hunger, so that the barren hath borne seven, and she who hath many children languisheth. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to Sheol and, and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and he lifteth up. He raises up the poor out of the dust. He lifts up the beggar from the refuse to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in uh, darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. And it goes on. 
but she's extolling the Lord and she sees the Lord as the greatest partner that she could ever have in, in motherhood because he's the one uh, who causes to raise up and, and he brings down uh, by him and his strength uh, all things are held together. So she prays this uh, wonderful prayer and and knowing God the way that she does and the way that I think that she does by, by her prayer that she uh, prays here, then she does the only thing, the only wise thing that uh, she could do, and that is that she commits uh, her son, Samuel, into the Lord's service. And in uh, chapter 1, verse 24, she says, or it says that when she had weaned him, she took him up with her uh, with three bullocks and, and we, one ephah of flour and a skin of wine and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. And they slew a bullock and they brought the child to Eli. And she said, O my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman who stood uh, thee here praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord as long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshipped the Lord there. This was uh, Hannah's responsibility uh, it, within that partnership, God being her divine partner. She knew what uh, she must do, and she committed uh, Samuel into the service of the Lord. She knew from uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6 that that the Lord expects uh, mothers and fathers, but uh, mainly mothers because uh, they're at home more th uh, than men are, to be the ones who would uh, teach uh, the children the things of the Lord. Though we're, we can't all commit our, our uh, children the way that Hannah did into the Lord's service, we all have that same responsibility to see that he's trained up uh, in, the, in the ways of the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 6 says, uh, that these words which I command thee this day shall not uh, shall be in thine heart. He expects the mothers to know the faith, that thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and upon thy gates. The woman's responsibility in motherhood is to see that her child is, is trained in the things of the Lord and, and uh, well taught uh, from, from Scripture. And then we also uh, find in uh, Proverbs that, that proverb that uh, most of us uh, claim at one time uh, in, our, in our lives, uh, Proverbs chapter uh, 22 says, Train up a child in the way that uh, he should go, in the sixth verse. And when he is old, he will not depart uh, from it. And the whole result of training up a child in the way that, uh, that he should go, the right way, the way that uh, God wants him to, is found in uh, verse 4, that by humility and fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. And a mother who trains up her child in the, in the way that uh, she should go, is not guaranteed, but can uh, can put her child on uh, on proper footing and, and uh, safe ground if if she trains him up in the way that he should go, uh, and that his life should be, if everything works right, characterized by riches and honor and, and life. Those that would choose to ignore that partnership uh, with God and, and train their child or raise their child uh, the way that uh, they want and exclude God from it. Their child's life might be characterized by thorns and snares because it tells us in the fifth verse that thorns and snares are in the way of the, of the perverse and he that doth uh, keep his soul shall be far from them. So mothers, the best thing that you could do for your child is, is to raise them up in the admonition of the Lord, uh, feed them the, the scriptures daily as you feed them uh, his meals, and if you want the best uh, for your child, that his life might be uh, a successful one, that he might uh, go on to love the Lord and serve the Lord and, and not be a, a, a castaway and, and a beggar, 
than, uh, than feed them uh, the scriptures. <coughs> Keep your children from uh, deception. There's so many teachers out there that would uh, have your children believe the things that they want. Television being probably one of the greatest uh, teachers that, that we have in, the, in our life. It would cause your child to think that uh, the end all of uh, life is to go out and, and have fun and uh, to gain as uh, much as they can and, uh, and enjoy life uh, no matter what the cost to, uh, to do their own thing no matter what. But, but we know that the children should be raised in the nurture and admonition of the Lord and, and trained in the way that uh, he should go. Also, uh, see a mother's responsibility found in 2 Timothy chapter uh, 3. In verse uh, 14, Paul talking to uh, Timothy here, he says to Timothy, he says, Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. I looked at that, I was wondering if Paul was talking about himself or not, telling uh, Timothy to, to be assured of those things because Paul was the one who taught him. But I think there's another uh, way that we could take that. I think he's probably talking about uh, Timothy's own mother and grandmother who, uh, who taught him uh, diligently. Because we find in, in 2 Timothy 1.5, Paul also talking about uh, Timothy's uh, mother. He says when I, that he calls to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice. And, and here we find then in, uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul telling uh, Timothy to kin continue in those things which he had learned and been assured of. Those things that he learned as a child, it says, that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise. He learned these from his mother and uh, his grandmother who took the time to, uh, to teach him and to make him wise unto salvation. Uh, through the scriptures, through letting him know of uh, of Jesus Christ. And a mother's responsibility uh, here in using the word of God to train up her child because all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And this is what we want for our children, isn't it? Isn't this what mothers want for their children? That... Uh, your child might grow up a righteous uh, person that, who doesn't have to be uh, reproved for uh, what he's done, who can uh, stand in the faith, who doesn't need uh, correction uh, when he's older. This is what God has in mind for us too as, as uh, we teach our children uh, the Bible, that the man of God, that your precious little bundle that, uh, that you held in, in your arms may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works fully equipped. It's a mother's job. And also we find in, in Titus chapter 2 that a woman, that a mother has uh, that same responsibility. Titus 2 chapter 3, that the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. Here's your responsibility, mothers, to teach good things to your children. That you may uh, teach young women to be sober-minded, to love their husbands, and to love their children, to be discreet and chaste, keepers at home, obedient to their own husbands. All these things you must teach uh, your child. The best way that you can do it is through the Scriptures and being an example to them, being the role model that, uh, that you must be to teach love and, and conduct by your example. You have a responsibility to not only care for the souls of your children and to see that they're, they're raised up and, and given everything that they need spiritually, but also uh, a mother cares for the complete uh, bundle. And in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 18, we find again that Hannah not only looked out for uh, her child's spiritual condition, but she also looked after uh, him uh, physically. And... It, 1 Samuel 2.18 
tells us that Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child, girded with a linen ephod. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year when she came up with her husband to offer uh, the yearly sacrifice. She didn't uh, shirk her responsibility as a mother, uh, taking him uh, to uh, Eli the priest and committing him unto uh, the Lord. This wasn't a 10th century uh, daycare center. She was committing uh, her, her son to the Lord, and it didn't stop there. She still looked after him, even though he wasn't uh, under her roof. And uh, she, she cared for him. And mothers, uh, we owe you a great uh, debt of gratitude for all that you've uh, done for your children. I owe my mother a great debt of gratitude for what she's done for me. And if you never ever thought about it before, just think about it now. How many people do you know that would uh, clean your mess in your pants? Not too many, but a mother would. How many mothers would, would sacrifice uh, their time? How many, how many people would, uh, would sacrifice sleep getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning to make sure that you had a bottle of milk uh, stuck in your mouth or food? Not too many. But I see mothers who would, who would take uh, the small portion, the smallest pork chop. Mothers always seem to get the, the outsider and the, the crust of uh, the bread when the, the kids get the, the good stuff that's on the inside. Mothers get the bruised apple. Mothers do without uh, clothing, without uh, a new pair of shoes or without a, a new dress so that their kids can, can have uh, new shoes. And uh, and we owe uh, a debt of gratitude uh, for all those wonderful things that, that mothers do for us. But also, there's rewards to have with, within this partnership. There's a negative aspect, I guess, gray hair and worry wrinkles for, for mothers. That's uh, going to come. But I don't think moms care about that very much when they look at, at their children. One of the great rewards of uh, motherhood is honor. And this is exactly what uh, God did for, uh, for Hannah. He honored her. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 3. Well, I think I got the wrong reference here, but it says, Them who honor me will I honor, uh, is, is God's uh, promise to us. And he, and he honored Hannah in uh, 1 Samuel 2, verse uh, 20. It says that Eli blessed uh, Elkanah and his wife, and he said, The Lord give thee seed of this woman for the loan which is lent to the Lord. And they went up unto uh, their home. And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. And so because Hannah honored God, he honored her, and he gave her her, uh, her heart's desire that she should have uh, a son and a family. And uh, this is exactly what uh, God did for her. He gave her the desires of her heart because her desire was rooted in God's purposes. God needed a man to speak for him. Tells us uh, in Samuel that in those days there wasn't uh, much uh, said, there wasn't much prophecy, there wasn't much uh, vision. God wasn't really speaking to uh, his people because of uh, the idolatry uh, of Israel. He needed somebody to speak for him, and Samuel was going to be the one uh, that he chose. And and he did. And uh, First Samuel uh, tells us so much of what uh, uh, he accomplished. One other reward in, in having God as, a, as your partner uh, in motherhood is godly children. And those who have God as their partner uh, in motherhood will always have uh, godly children because <coughs> godly mothers will seek to train up their child to love uh, God, to love God with all their heart, soul, and mind, with everything that they have. And you can take a look uh, around uh, today and find those children who have been raised by, uh, by godly parents and, and godly uh, mothers 
especially, because they're the ones that are serving. They're the ones that uh, love the Lord and whose lives show that uh, they love the Lord. And Samuel was uh, no different. Samuel went on to become uh, the first and long line of prophets. He was one of the last judges. He served as a bridge between uh, one of Israel's uh, lowest uh, points in history to one of their most glorious uh, under King David. Uh, the Lord ranked uh, him with the Moses, and uh, he singled him out as uh, one whom the Lord loved in Jeremiah 15, 1. And I just underlined a few things here, what, uh, what Sam Samuel accomplished within his life, uh, being one of uh, the first prophets. All Israel knew that Samuel was a prophet of the Lord. All Israel. He wasn't a, a nobody that uh, the people... Uh, didn't know, but all Israel knew that he was a prophet of the Lord. Samuel challenged the people to put away their foreign gods and to serve the Lord only. When the Philistines threatened the Israelites gathering at uh, Mitzvah, Samuel interceded for Israel, and the Lord answered with thunder against uh, the enemy. Samuel got God to uh, to do a great thing uh, here for for Israel. Samuel was a judge, a priest. He made his home at the Ramah, and he administered justice. And he also built an altar there. And Samuel anointed King Saul. He anointed uh, also King David. Uh, several of the Old Testament books has recognized uh, Samuel as a man of prayer. Tells us that uh, in Acts, uh, he is uh, described as a man who foretold uh, what would happen in New Testament times. Paul mentions him as in his sermon at Antioch. In Hebrews chapter 11, he's uh, listed among those whose faith pleased God. Isn't it a wonderful thing because a woman uh, realized that the greatest partner that she could have in motherhood was God. Her child uh, turned out uh, this way. Train up a child in the way that he should go. It's the best thing that you can do uh, for your children. Mothers whose spirits the world never alters. Mothers with courage and mothers that pray. Mothers whose faith never wavers nor falter. These are the mothers the world needs today. And I just pray this morning that you would see motherhood. Those of you that are not uh, mothers and have long time seen your uh, babies uh, go and start raising families of their own, maybe you could pass some advice on to them that motherhood is a partnership with God and to be treated as such. And not to be excluded, but to be uh, welcomed as a a partner who has all the answers, all the strength, and everything that that child is going to need to, to reach fulfillment. Let's pray. Our dear Lord, we thank you so much for your word and for the wonderful example of Hannah. Lord, we thank you that there are so many here that love you, so many mothers here that have entered into that wonderful partnership and have entrusted you uh, to you, the care of their children. And Lord, we know that, that you are the greatest uh, partner in the world to be, uh, to be welcomed and not to be uh, shunned, to be uh, cherished and to be loved and uh, given honor. Lord, we just pray that, that all mothers and fathers here today might see from your message that we have an awesome responsibility and an obligation to raise up our children uh, that they might walk, a walk that is worthy of the Lord. And Lord, we just look to you that you might guide their little feet, that you might guide their path, Lord, that you might envelop them in your arms of protection, and watch over them. And Lord,